dun, 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 dun. Why do the infamous stormtroopers of the Star Wars franchise even wear armor? I can't think of a single instance in the films where we see a stormtrooper survive a direct hit from a blast. <laughs> despite being covered head to toe in supposedly protective stuff. Even so, I think if we really consider the circumstances of the ever-present soldier in the galaxy far, far away, it starts to make a lot of sense. Pretty much all we see stormtroopers do on the big screen is bite the blaster bolt, and fans have asked why for years. It's not like the Rebellion has weapons that the Empire didn't expect, so why doesn't their armor seem to protect them at all? Well, I think it does to a certain extent, and the design of the armor itself is a sensible compromise between a number of competing factors, and that's why they are outfitted the way they are. So first, imagine that you're the Emperor, yeah! and you need to outfit millions of soldiers in some kind of armor. What would you want that armor to be? Well, if I were the Emperor, I would want armor that is bleh, light for mobility, bleh, imposing for psychological effect, bleh, effective against weaponry and strikes from that weaponry, and bleh, cheap, because I've spent most of my credits rebuilding a Death Star that some teenager blew up. So given these criteria, oh, oh, I can't see anything in these helmets. So given these criteria, how does Stormtrooper armor stack up? Well, we know it is a thin layer of plastic-like stuff over a body glove, so it's probably also light because the Empire has to ferry battalions into and out of atmospheres, or we could just ask any cosplayer, the stuff is light. So, check mark. And now, name a more imposing bad guy soldier just based on looks alone. Yeah, they're definitely imposing. So, check mark. But is Stormtrooper armor effective? Well, the canon at least says it is as an environmental suit and a spacesuit, but that's not really what we're talking about. Every, dang it, every single blaster shot seems to be ah, a one hit kill on these guys if you hit them. So how could it possibly be any kind of effective at damage mitigation if that's the case? I can't hit anything. That's how that feels. Oh. Maybe if we consider how blasters actually damage objects, Stormtrooper armor design will start to make sense. <laughs> My name's Kyle Hill. I'm here to science you. In the Star Wars universe, blasters are considered plasma-based weapons. But in reality, I don't really think they would be. And that's because plasma is basically just a very, very hot gas. And so if you shot a blob of it out, within milliseconds of exiting the weapon, it would expand as gases are wont to do and become harmless almost instantaneously. Yeah, so even though blaster bolts don't move fast enough, i.e. the speed of light, I think they are much more likely to be laser weapons based on what we see them do. Come on, come on, do something, come on. Consider the anatomy of a blaster wound. Most direct hits on stormtroopers look like they are very shallow. It doesn't go all the way through them, and there's a lot of smoke and a little bit of fire. This fits almost precisely with how lasers penetrate targets. Lasers make their way through materials by heating up a thin layer of the material's surface. That material then turns either from a liquid to a gas or a solid to a gas, either vaporizing or sublimating. Then, that gas comes out as more or less a tiny explosion, which creates a crater in the material. Now, even high-powered lasers don't vaporize that much with a single pulse, and so that is why most lasers, and in theory, laser weapons, would be pulsed weapons, having multiple pulses all coming in after the material is vaporized and creating deeper and deeper craters as they hit the bottom. This is how it makes it through. The most common weapons in our galaxy do not penetrate with vaporization, but with pressure. That's what body armor protects our squishy bodies from. So when something like a bullet hits body armor, 
it is coming in with some force. And what the body armor is doing is using its material to spread out the area of impact with its very strong fibers that resist being pushed out of the way. And that increases the area over which the force is applied, therefore lowering the pressure that would otherwise overcome the strength of your skin and your bones and your organs and other stuff. Even with this small change in the area over which a force acts, body armor can drastically change what kind of damage your body receives. It's like the difference between getting hit with just another drill and getting hit with a manhole cover. One's gonna kill you, one's gonna break your ribs and give you a lot of bruising. I know which one I'd go with. So stormtrooper armor needs to protect against vaporization and heat transfer, not necessarily extreme piercing pressures. And looking at the armor from this certain point of view, I think we're almost all fine here. Now, thank you. How are you? Lasers do not penetrate targets with pressure like bullets do, and so you do not need the same kind of bulky body armor. And it looks like blasters fire only a single laser pulse at a time, and so the armor only needs to be thick enough to prevent that first, there we go, first layer of vaporization from including a soldier's sweet, sweet dermis, epi, and otherwise. Oh, sorry, this is also gonna be like a small explosion upon impact, so it also makes sense to have this armor some distance away from the skin and over a body glove. And if you are in a firefight with rebel scum, potentially taking many glancing blaster bolts, you would want armor that can also disperse the heat from those blaster bolts effectively, which is exactly what vaporizing material is good at. In fact, armor that is designed to be vaporized to disperse heat is already a thing that we've made. It's called ablative shielding. And ablative shielding is effective enough at getting rid of heat that we've covered the bottom of re-entering spacecraft in the stuff, like the Apollo command modules. So, if Stormtrooper armor is designed anything like this, in theory, it's effective. Checkmark. So if Stormtrooper armor is designed at least somewhat sensibly, as I am contending, why doesn't it seem to protect any Stormtroopers at all in the movies? Well, I think that's because it fits our last criterion too. It's cheap. Now imagine that you are the emperor again. Bleah! And you have the choice between two options. Option one is armor that is so thick, it will protect all of your troopers from any possible blaster fire, period. Option two is armor that is just thick enough to prevent all but direct hits from becoming KOs, and it still functions as an environmental suit and a spacesuit. Which one do you go with? Keep in mind that some kid just blew up your space house that cost millions of trillions of credits. That's right, Blah! you go with the armor that works in theory and mostly in practice. So why do stormtroopers even wear armor if it doesn't seem to protect them from the most common weapons in their own galaxy? Compromise, it's light, it's imposing, it's in theory effective against laser attacks and it's cheap due to plausible economic constraints. It's going to result in a lot of blasted troopers, sure, but we make the same compromises in our militaries, giving soldiers armor that works good enough, not armor that is perfect in every possible circumstance. Remember, stormtroopers are disposable, and any armor is gonna be better than none. That's the difference between a shallow blaster wound that we see most stormtroopers get, but not die from, most of the time, technically, and Greedo's face because science, whoa, you shot first, you're learning, bye. Do you know what's kind of cool? In theory, because it is more reflective, Captain Phasma's armor would be even better at protecting from laser attacks. Because it has a high albedo, chrome, it's very shiny, it reflects a higher percentage of light than many other things, especially non-shiny things. So, at least the incoming radiation from a blaster bolt is gonna be partially deflected energy. The pulses are so short that most of it is gonna go into vaporizing some layer and still have a tiny explosion, but it's going to be better the more reflective it is, which, is cooler than how they used Captain Phasma in the first movie. 
Thank you so much for watching and a big shout out to Dr. Luke Campbell who helped me a lot with this episode and the previous episode. Thanks, dude. If you want more stuff, check out My Squatch with me and Dan Casey or the space program on projectalpha.com where if you sign up for a free 30-day trial now, you can get this show two days before all those other normies. Also, follow me here. Bye.